Hey everyone, welcome back. November 4th edition of the Pocket Change Market Report. Hopefully you guys are having a great start to your weekend. We're going to dive right in on some of these errors and varieties that have sold on eBay within the last 24 to 48 hours. What's been hot? What's been, well, not? Well, we don't usually talk about the knots, but the coins that have been uh, obviously been selling really well, we're going to address them here today. Um, plus, it's going to give you a little bit of perspective on what's being found out there. Uh, of course, if you're an avid change hunter like I am, then obviously you're going to have a little bit of skin in the game when it comes to these type of videos. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Find your treasure, add it to your collection, or resell it for some massive gains. And we're not talking about some protein powder. We are talking about the best of the best. The best coins that are that exist in circulation today. All right, so uh, a few little ground rules. The same old, same old. We don't talk about graded coins. Keep that money in your pocket. There's no sense of grading these when you'll still make a lot of money off of them. All right. Um, pretty easy and uh, self-explanatory there. And uh, second of all, all of the images that you're going to see today on the PCMR are original to those sellers listings we didn't juice or doctor any of it to make them look better or worse you're just gonna get what you see and um, it'll give you an idea of where that bar is set for a lot of these coins so let's go ahead and dive right in and see where the sales are um, one thing that I don't really talk about but I think I'll make a habit of you know kind of um, addressing that um, is that I'll let you know if uh, these particular coin auctions ended up going through as uh, a regular auction format, which means there's a number of bids getting to a certain dollar figure on there. Uh, quite a few buy it nows and set price listings dominate the uh, the PCMR this week. Uh, so, you know, if, um, if you don't want to give away your coins, you could always price protect your listings by setting a certain price that is not only commensurate to where the market is currently but also something that's comfortable with you if you sell it and it sells for what you want it for as far as the floor is concerned then you have done your job all right so we're going to start things off here with this 1940s lincoln wheat scent this is actually one of the dates that has a lot of really cool things going for it uh there's mid-mark varieties uh but this one right here there's a lot of die cracks, retain cut die breaks, what they call pre-cuts. Um, and there's also the full grown um, later progression cut die breaks, all right, that form on these. Um, and they're all quite nice to look at. So you would have guessed that on this particular piece, we have a, a pretty nice, I guess what we could call pre-cut. Uh, there's very little displacement, but you can see it if you stare at it close enough. Uh, what's displacement uh, you say well first of all with a retain cut you need two entry exit points of a die crack that go into the devices you, you could kind of follow it through and it snakes out to the other other end of the rim um, and displacement is showing a clear shift in the patterns of the design of the coin if you follow the uh, the right side line of the wheat stock, you can see that where it meets the crack, there is a little bit of a shift there. That's the displacement. Um, this one, very minimal, but you can not see it on there. Uh, all, are re all as a result of a little bit of a breakage on the die. Uh, the, the piece hadn't quite entirely fallen out yet, uh, but there is a uh, defined crack on there. And, uh, you know, after a lot more strikes, that piece will shake loose fall out and that's where a full-blown cut is created uh now this particular coin right here uh do not underestimate retain cuts or pre-cuts they do have some marketability this one ended up selling for 25 dollars 99 that was the floor on this one and uh you know quick little buy it now ended up scooping this one now here's an example of what a full cut looks like after the piece of the die had fallen out uh, this one is uh, quite well known on eBay here recently. I think there was a cache of them that ended up getting discovered, whether that's through a, uh, a mint sewn bag or some rolls. Kind of hard to say, but 
Uh, this is one right here that has seen uh, quite a bit of a spotlight on eBay here in the last like three months. Uh, and, and quite a few of them as well. But the prices haven't really dropped down too much on, on them. Uh, you can see the cut die break over the word trust there. And um, yeah, that is, uh, that's a no brainer. That thing is raised off of the, uh, the field of the coin there, uh, indicating that the piece of die had fallen out at this point and and uh all the metal flows going into that empty cavity creating a raised blob on whatever coin it strikes um beautiful nice condition coin as most of them have been this one sold for 25 dollars um which has been kind of like that average sale price on these so i've seen them go as high as 30 and as low as 18 to 20 dollars uh i think the 18 to 20 dollar version had some carbon spotting on there which is a type of corrosion that you can't reverse so um you know pretty nice one and you can find these all throughout many various dates of lincoln sets uh the next one that we have here pretty nice one uh and not a date that we come across too often it's a 1964 jefferson nickel it's off center by about 40%. Good looking coin. Um, it looks to be in mid state condition and quite a tough date for date collectors of this sort of error. This one sold for $49.95. If you do come across one of these in your travels, whether that's at a coin show or a shop and they're asking way too little for it, and, um, you know, I would say buy it. Uh, if for anything, to flip it. And make, you know, quite a bit of profit off of it. Uh, that's kind of the name of the game when we do the PCMR is recognizing areas of opportunity. Not just the the roll hunting and the piggy bank cracking and searching and all that stuff. Uh, but things like this are identifiable and found in those mid-sewn bags. So, um, uh, oh, also at coin shops and shows. And you just never know how much these are going to sell for. Uh, so the first piece of currency type item on our list is going to be a lot of four, what they call 2013 B duplicate star notes. All right. These should be no stranger to a lot of you who are into currency. Uh, in 2013, uh, the BEP or Bureau of Engraving and Printing, they're the ones that print our money. Um, they had done a full run size of the 2013 B, which are New York district star notes. Um, and those were, these were all printed in Washington, DC. As a matter of fact, the top right note is a DC print note. You can see that here at the, um, uh, the plate number right above that bottom right two right here, you'll see that it just has a large plate letter and then a small micro number. Um, the ones printed in Fort Worth have a FW, which leads me to my next point. Um, the BEP then three and a half, four years later ended up printing the damn same run of the same serial number, the same, um, uh, district and all that stuff. And they're all bearing Fort Worth notes. So people are hoarding these. Um, it's my understanding that the biggest known collection of these was just recently sold to a, another owner um you know so they, there was a change of hands and ownership of this particular uh, group of notes um and these are all quite collected and valuable people are looking to pair up a dc and a fort worth same serial number and uh get them graded and you know they're worth a few thousand dollars as a result so the four notes that you see here ended up selling for 99 dollars uh with a average price of about 25 dollars a piece which is the going rate on these. They're still being found in circulation and they represent something that, that truly can make you money, right? One note for $25, you do the math, that's a pretty good flip rate of return. Uh, our next one right here, boy, this thing looks like it's off center cut, but it's not. This is a 1977 $1 bill with a misaligned second print, all right? That's the base black print of the front of the note. Uh, as you can see, it looks off center, but when we look at the back of the note, all right, it's uh, I'm not going to say it's perfectly margin, but you know, the center, it's centered enough that's within BEP tolerances. Um, this one right here is a uh, good note, although it does suffer from some just circulation related uh, uh, kind of condition issues. 
uh, it still ended up selling for $22.53. Again, this is something that you could find on much newer notes. The better the condition, the more that these are worth. Keep that in mind. Statehood quarter errors are quite popular. And uh, these are collected by state. And in certain cases, uh, you know, the, the maniacs out there uh, will want both a Philadelphia and Denver minted error of each state. That's a heck of an undertaking there. Once you get later in the series, these get incredibly scarce. Here's a 2000D Virginia. Uh, this one is a broad strike. Uh, you can see that it has still a full rim on the obverse there, all the while looking off center. So it's an uncentered broad strike. Uh, simply put, the collar that holds the coin in place during the striking procedure uh, malfunctioned. All right, so the collar was not there. Uh, therefore, the metal flow goes outward a little bit more, making this a little bit bigger coin than a standard quarter. This one right here, ladies and gentlemen, ended up selling for $35, whereas on a regular dated pre-1999 quarter, um, you know, that's what, maybe a $10 coin at, at best. So this kind of helps uh, uh, support the amount of money that people are willing to put into these coins if they just don't exist on the market today. All right, so we have a couple of these minor errors, stuff that, you know, as an avid wheat scent searcher, I, I buy bags of wheat scents all the time, uh, or at least I used to. I'm trying to liquidate through them right now. Um, you know, these are the type of things you can find, and uh, they're not just worth one cent, or if you're, you know, looking at these at copper value, they're not just five cents a piece. These are worth quite a bit more than that. This is a 1929 Lincoln wheat scent, with a uh, struck through on the reverse, uh, probably some sort of uh, uh, debris that was on the working die <clears throat> prior to the uh, strike of the coin. Uh, so it could be hardened grease, it could be a detached lamination, it could be it could be anything, a piece of wood also as well. Uh, so this one right here ended up selling for twelve dollars and thirty eight cents. Uh, keep the, this uh, this in mind as you find these. Um, and they look like this where it's a depression and, um, you know, they're going to have a really crisp edge to them. Um, you could always tell the difference between this and one that's damaged, uh, because you're going to have the buildup of material on the, uh, the edges of the anomaly. All right. Uh, so this one, yeah, pretty neat find. Um, you know, these are always good for about eight to $15, I think the difference maker is the overall size of a strike through. The bigger the strike through uh, will make a huge impact on how much it'll sell for in the future. And uh, here's another one as well. Uh, call this one probably more of a detached lamination uh, where there, it's a defective planchet, obviously. There's some impurities in the metal during which it was uh, uh, produced and... Uh, yeah, this one, pretty pretty nice looking, uh, although it is gunked up with a lot of grease and stuff. There wasn't any reverse image, but the uh, seller did put a side-by-side -side of a normal Lincoln set and one that has that uh, either strike-through or detached lamination. Uh, this one right here sold for $13.88. Again, guys, these are not damaged. They're not junk. Um, anytime you could take one cent, flip it for a thousand times face value, that's always a good day. The money all adds up, it goes into the same pool, and that's what they call profit. That's part of kind of like making this whole side gig work, is by recognizing that you got to take the smalls with the bigs. 1978D, this one's a off-center Lincoln, uh, probably about 60% off-center. Nice full readable date and mint mark. Uh, does have a pretty big size carbon spot on the reverse. Um, which, you know, some people don't particularly care for. If you look on the actual Lincoln Memorial, there is also some sort of damage on there as well. Uh, something that scraped across it. It could be a, a, a change counter or um, maybe the machinery that wraps these in tube rolls. You know, could be anybody's guess. Uh, but this might be a coin uh, that a collector might want from a budget standpoint. All right. So just because it has issues doesn't mean it's worthless. This one right here sold for $22.38. Again, not too bad of a sale. And, uh, you know, it's uh, still worth something to someone. 
All right, we got a nice little collector piece here, 1887 Indian Head set. All right, so if you're a fan of the oldies, then this one might be for you. Uh, this is something that is uh, quite normal to find on Indian Head sets. Uh, this one, much like the very first coin that we talked about today on the PCMR, features a retained cud or a pre-cud, uh, which is right here. Um, quite substantial considering that there's three entry exit points of a die crack. If you were to follow all the die cracks and then there's even some pretty sizable die chips and die breaks in there when you get into the reef area, this thing is fantastic. All right. Um, now the rationale is that you have a coin that is in really nice condition. This thing is probably easily an XF45, maybe mid AU condition coin. It's that, that nice. Um, ended up selling for $95.95. Not a particularly rare date either. 1887, quite a few of them were made, uh, but these are a lot more common in uh, circulated condition, like much more circulated, like VG, fine, that area. Um, so pretty nice example here with this retained cud with three different entry exit cracks on there. Really cool. And again, Indian Head Sense is kind of a feeding frenzy of cuds and cracks c and c's baby uh next piece of currency coming right up this is actually a two pack and this is like this is something that i think you guys need to pay attention to this is like a a, a trend that's not exactly new but it might be something that you know you guys could possibly you know integrate into your uh strap hunts 2013 two dollar bill sure it's a star note um, neat looking serial number, you know, some, some, uh, some folks might see it as a birthday note as well. February 1, 1993. I know someone's going to say that out in chat, although it's not correctly oriented, um, you know, as to how I like it. Some people can use this as a birthday note. What's really cool is that someone had found the, um, the matching serial number, although it's not a star note it has the same numbers on there. Um, and they sold it as a pair. I believe this is a 2017 A series as well. A um, little bit out of focus, but had to blow it up a little bit to put it on the full page here. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, you know, when you could effectively pair up the same serial numbers of the same denomination, whether it's a star note and another star note or a star note and a regular HA block like this one here, um, good things can happen. Uh, there's the what the two serial numbers look like together and uh guess what a hundred and one dollar sale here on four dollars that's that's a heck of a return and uh, it's a lot of fun to do this if you're into it and you like to hunt for these type of things uh there's a there's a lot of potential here so keep that in mind 1974 D candy half dollar uh this one should be at the top of your list if you're a a roll searcher. Uh, I know half dollar is still very popular today. When you're hunting for silver, you got to make sure that you're not overlooking the die varieties and mint errors because they are plentiful in this particular series. Uh, this one right here is the FS101 doubled die obverse, right? This one is uh, a must find. You should search up close of every single 74D that you come across. Check out the doubling in we and trust on this one, and even some of the uh, the digits and the date as well, showing that robust spread of the doubling. Uh, so this one, not the greatest of shapes, but still managed a $15 squeaker of a sale on eBay here in the last day or two. And uh, yeah, I have to talk about these. It, it's funny because I was on my whatnot sale last night friday nights are usually my my night for these things and someone was asking about wood grain lincoln sense i'm like really is people are interested in that and it turns out there were a few people that were genuinely interested in this highly collected artistic looking coin right here here's a 1931 lincoln wheat scent uh that is a woody now is it a mint error is it just something it wasn't painted on there I, the painted on argument, it, you know, can fool a lot of people. It really does look like it was painted on by like um, gold paint or something, right? Um, but what we have here is simply just an in, improper alloy mix. So back in the day, 
when they were producing the uh, the blanks or the uh, strips rather for the Lincoln sets, they had to prep the metals and all that in its rawest form. Okay, they got met, uh, melted down, they got mix it. Well, anyways, it's predominantly copper, but they do add just a really trace amount of either zinc or aluminum as kind of like a binder. It didn't work out too well, and they don't mix very well with copper. So what we have here is the uh, the subsequent, I guess, end product of the improper alloy mix of some of that zinc or tin with the copper. You get this beautiful wood graining effect. Uh, very highly collectible today. Uh, these things are still somewhat affordable. This one sold for $19.97. I sold three of them last night for between $8 and $10, various dates. Um, so they're not worthless, that's for sure. I ended up out of three cents, three pennies, ended up making about 30 bucks, and you guys could do it too. So go ahead and make sure that you don't overlook these. Um, they typically are found on coins dated like 1956 and earlier. Um, you know, it's just an observation that I've noticed on these. Uh, wow, this thing is a monster. A really beautiful 1981A. Uh, super misaligned second print against that base black print that you see on here. Uh, the overprint is perfectly centered for the, uh, the note sheet that you see. Uh, when we look at the back... Perfectly margined, perfectly centered, uh, and the note is in high grade condition. So again, notice that it's not graded. This one ended up selling for, get this, $999.95. Wow, that's a lot of money. Um, and the more dramatic this type of error that you find, especially in high grades, the more money that collectors will throw at you as a result. Who loves silver certificates? I know I do. This is another great one here. 1935E series. $1 silver cert with uh, what we call a couple of gutter folds. Uh, these were originally uh, uh, sheet wrinkles that never got stretched out. So they were printed over. And then as a result, you could stretch out these wrinkles after the printings occurred. And you'll see these uh, inkless gutters is what we call uh, now, when we look at the back, you'll see that uh, where the gutters are, but you can see that it's been printed on. Um, so, at one point, the, the wrinkles were uh, stretched out. Maybe not that, that top middle one there. Um, that one's uh, kind of, I don't know, I'm 50-50 on that one. Uh, but really cool piece, nonetheless. This one sold for $125, and the note's in pretty good shape. Probably a high-end VF, maybe an XF40 this time around. Nothing too crazy. How about 1947S lamination? Right on the date there. So you got a detached part and then there's still a nice attached piece. So it's like, you know, 50-50 split there on that one. Uh, this one right here ended up selling for $25.25. Uh, kind of a very lofty amount of money. Usually laminations are around the $8 to $10 range. Um, there probably is something that, you know, a collector saw on this one that they really needed and wanted. And as a result, they earned it. Um, yeah, crazy seeing this one being sold as a pair, but we have two, count them, two, 1935 uh, Buffalo Nickels uh, with the very well-known doubled die reverse. This is the FS801, uh, if you guys are familiar with the Cherry Picker's Guide variety. But when we look at this one here, the doubling is right on five cents. Unmistakable. Uh, this one here, you can see a couple rim nicks there, which probably contributed to some sort of net grade type uh, thing here. Um, but yeah, you can see the notching and uh, all of the great stuff on here. This is a great coin, by the way. Uh, here's the second example. Looking a little bit better. See that, that split there on the V and 5? That thing is uh, crazy looking. So I was more than surprised when this lot only ended up selling for $39.99. Um, whereas, you know, I've seen singular coins in about find VF sell for about $40. So this was kind of like a two for one deal uh, in real life happening as we speak. Um, just a date to look out for, 1922 plain, no mint mark. As you guys know, this one date here, they're all produced at the Denver Mint. 
Um, now, obviously, there needs to be a clearly defined missing Denver Mint mark. This one, where the area would have a Denver Mint mark, you could see kind of a hump there. All right. Depending on who you talk to, they would consider this one maybe the weak D variety, which is worth not nearly as much uh, to collectors because there's just a huge discrepancy in values from the weak D to the plain no mint mark. Um, this one also paired up with the uh, the not so desired weak reverse, um, the strong reverse or the die three or reverse die three of this type is uh, a lot more wanted. Uh, so this one right here, folks, this one ended up selling for three hundred twenty four dollars and fifty two cents with fifty four bids. It's looking like that people put a little bit of confidence in this one as being a full legit plain no mint mark variety. Um, and of course, the same seller, I believe it's the same seller, had a phenomenal 1937D three-legged buffalo. Uh, this one is in superb shape, um, dare I say it, XF45, somewhere around there, uh, which puts this one right around $1,000 to $1,100 on, uh, on the market for a graded one. Um, so, you know, this one has the, uh, the raised what we call P-line right underneath the buffalo's stomach there. And then a fully deteriorated uh, rear leg. So those are a couple of the, the main pickup points for a legitimate three-legged buffalo. Which, as you guys know, is simply just an over-polished eye. And that's why that front leg is missing there. Uh, so this one sold for $889.50 with 52 bids. Uh, pretty good deal here on this one. Uh, and it's problem-free. I can tell just by looking at it. Um, if the sale of this coin won't kind of like put your guys' worries down a little bit because it's not graded, have no fear. If you know what you're looking for and it looks good, it's not damaged or beat up or cleaned, then, you know, uh, you're going to be in good shape with this kind of purchase. All right, well, eventually we would have gotten to uh, our first 2023 Extra V Lincoln sold sale. Uh, here's one right here. Um, not a pristine example. Uh, you can tell it's got some circulation wear. It's got contact marks, especially seen on the reverse of this one. Uh, in case you guys need a little refresher, there's an extra V notch there next to Victor David Brenner's initials. Um, as you guys know, these are being graded by PCGS and NGC with the extra V attribution on there. So if you got these and they're in phenomenal shape, Take advantage of it. Uh, people are making anywhere from about $100 to $400 in profit for every one that they sell in these graded holders. Uh, this particular raw example sold for $29.13. It's one of the cheaper ones I've seen, but I think because of the grade, this is one that probably is not one suitable for third-party grading activities. Uh, 1960 D over D RPM. This is one that we don't talk about or see that much on eBay. This is RPM number five and a really nice, brilliant red example. Uh, you'll see that the secondary Denver mint mark is west and a little bit south of the primary mint mark, a very strong one. And on a full red mint state example, it's very easy to see. This one ended up selling for $19.95. It seems a little low, but I guarantee you that's well within the paces of the market uh, because it's not a cherry picker's guide variety. Believe it or not, it's not. Um, it, could it be one day? Possibly, but there are other, I think, in my humble opinion, much better varieties than aren't in the cherry picker's guide variety book. Uh, that one day will be and are much more deserving of it. Uh, here's a nice little off-center, beautiful coin too. 1983P Washington Quarter. Uh, this particular example right here, uh, again, you know, it's it's a date that we're no stranger to. We, we see them maybe once, twice a month. Uh, they're not particularly rare, um, but it still ended up selling for $49.99. So not too bad. And uh, probably, again, one of the craziest errors, all right? And we had a couple of them today. Here's the second $1 error. It's a fold-over, printed-over note, all right? There's just so much going on here. Um, so it was folded over. It was cut. Uh, you could see the back print on them uh, of two notes. And that's the crazy part of this. That I think that's really what really um, 
turn this one into an animal. Uh, so when it's unfolded, check that out. Half of Washington's face is gone. Every everything about the note is half there, um, but is that is really cool. And I can't believe that this managed to escape a PMG or PCGS uh, currency graded holder. I, I think those days are numbered. I think the person that bought this one will probably end up submitting this one in the near future. Um, there's a little bit of the uh, the back uh, just showing that that corner folded over. Um, and it looks normal, you know, it's like, yeah, here's a, you know, a dollar bill with a fold in it that I just threw in my pocket, all scrunched up like, uh, so wild $701 and 85 cents, 34 bits on the sale price. If you thought you were going to get this one cheap, my friends think again, uh, this, this is a monstrous note, especially when you have, uh, the appearance of, um, of two reverses on that fold over part of it this thing is just incredible it's probably one of the coolest paper money errors i've seen for the year probably a top three in my estimation uh here's another <clears throat> extra v 2023 lincoln uh much better looking coin this time around this one is uh probably an easy solid 65 grade if i had to guess uh now could that be something that's worth grading i don't know considering that Mid-state 66 uh, NGC or PCGS graded coins have sold for like 150 to 175. So you know, yeah, you can make a few dollars. It's not as not as crazy as a 67 grade, which is kind of like that benchmark for big profits. Uh, again, there's your V notch on this one, and 59 dollars and 99 cents was the sale price on this. Nice off-center, full date and mint mark, 1968D Lincoln Memorial set. 70% uh, off-center, I would say, on this one. Nice gem red as well. Um, not a date that's particularly rare, but this one is just overall presentation is beautiful. Uh, very nice collector-grade piece. $48.61 with 18 bits. So that is a beautiful coin. Uh, this particular person sold a pair of off-center Lincolns, 1974, which is about 60% off-center, and an 85 Zinken. All right, so we got a copper and a Zinken all in one lot. Um, so, yeah, pretty nice uh, looking coins. Again, a few little carbon spots, I would say, um, the main detractors. But, you know, it's again, it's not too crazy. Again, if if there's a person out there putting together a set and they need these two dates, bam. That that's uh, that's the ticket. Uh, so for the pair, fifty dollars and sixty three cents with twelve bits. So sometimes there is uh, some good things happening where you could sell something in a bulk lot. Um, two coins is hardly bulk, but it's it's considered bulk. And the final coin that is easily mistaken as road rash, like this thing was drug across a concrete sidewalk for a few a uh, few blocks. Uh, well, maybe not a few blocks, maybe a few feet, you know, 1960 Lincoln Memorial sent, um, well, well, what can we say? It was, uh, struck on a split planchet. All right. So it was a defective planchet. First of all, the coin had, uh, split right in half from its edge, um, thereby creating kind of like this rough patchy, uh, road rash appearance on one side. And then just a really weak struck reverse or obverse on there. Um, the coin's in phenomenal shape, nice mint state red brown, or probably more brown on this one. Uh, nice, nice date too, and uh, a great looking error. Um, these traditionally have sold for a a pretty good amount of cash. This one ended up selling for thirty two dollars and ninety nine cents, and they kind of travel well together. So if you're going through like say a mint state bag of these things. If you find one, more than likely, for whatever reason, you find like three or four of them. Uh, but when you do, that man, they uh, they hit you pretty hard. You know exactly what you're staring at. Um, you know, these coins, the, the coppers, they usually weigh 3.1 grams. This example weighed in at 1.83 grams. So it's definitely lighter in weight. It's thinner as well. All right. Really pretty looking coin. One of my favorites for the week. All right, guys. Well, that comes to uh, to an end here. Uh, videos for entertainment purposes only, not financial advice. Please do collect and grade responsibly if that's your thing. 
Uh, always a pleasure talking about the market and some of the coins that folks like you and I are finding out there in the wild today. So uh, we are heading into holiday land where a lot of people are roll hunting. Uh, they're enjoying the activity, uh, the hobby, the practice, whatever you want to call it. And they're also enjoying selling those unneeded coins for a big amount of profit. So if you're looking to make a few extra bucks this holiday season, why don't you go ahead and grab some uh, rolls of coin or maybe a couple straps of $1 bills and find some treasures that you guys can enjoy as well. That's going to go ahead and wrap things up. I'm your host, Sean, with Blue Ridge Silverhound. You guys enjoy the rest of your weekend. Best of luck in your hunts. And I shall see you on the next coin video. So long.